be on the meeting? Yes, we do. Thank you very much. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, this is Desert Water Agency's regular board meeting, February 21st, 2023. And pursuant to government code 54953E, there will be no public location for attending in person. This meeting will be held virtually because state and local officials recommend measures to promote social distancing. In order to reduce feedback, please mute your, mute your audio when you're not speaking. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We will um, call on directors in roll call order for discussion and questions in the following order. Director Grasha, Director Bloomer, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, and President Ortega. All votes will be conducted via roll call. Um, and if at this time I could get um, uh, Director Bloomer to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America in the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, item number two, roll call. Um, Assistant Secretary Baca, would you mind uh, conducting the roll call, please? Director Grasha? Here. Director Bloomer? Here. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Here. Vice President Bowman's absence is noted, and President Ortega? Present. Thank you. We can now move to item number three, which is public comment on items not on the agenda. So this is now a time for members of the public uh, to uh, speak to us about items that are not on our agenda um, that are relevant to the business of the water agency. Uh, we ask that if you do have uh, public comment to make at this time, to keep it under three minutes. And as provided in the Brown Act, the board is prohibited from acting on items that are not listed on today's agenda. Secretary, Assistant Secretary Baca, did we receive any public comment via email? I have not received any via email. Okay, thank you. If there is anyone on the call from the public that would like to speak at this time, please uh, either raise your hand or the icon with the raised hand, please. Seeing none, we can move to item number four. This is the time for public comment on items that are listed on our, on our agenda. Members of the public, public may also comment on items listed on the agenda that, that are not subject of a public hearing at this time. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes. Sec uh, Assistant Secretary Baca, have we received any comments related to items on our agenda today? No, I'm accepted, Thank you. And at this time, if there are any uh, members of the public who would like to speak on items listed on our agenda, please um, please raise your hand or use the um, I raised hand icon on the Zoom call. Seeing none, we can move to the next item, five, which is consent calendar items. Items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be acted upon by one motion of the board without discussion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a board member requests a specific item to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Are there any directors on this call who would like to have an item uh, removed from the um, consent calendar at this time? Seeing none, we, I will uh, look for a motion to accept the consent calendar items as, as described on the agenda. I'll make a motion to accept the consent calendar. Thank you, we have a, we have a first from Director Bloomer. May, may I have a second, please? I will second that. Thank you, we have a second from, assist, uh, from Treasury Secretary, uh, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, thank you. 
So uh, Assistant Secretary Baca, if you would take the roll call vote, please. Director Grasha? Yes. Director Bloomer? Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Yes. Vice President Bowman is his absence is noted and President Ortega. Aye. Thank you. Now we'll move to, act, to uh, item number six, which are our action items. We have four of them today. We'll start with A, request adoption of resolution number 1296, DWA meeting expense reimbursement policy for board of directors. And we'll start with uh, our finance director, Ms. Sines. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so you have before you um, the staff report and uh, the new draft uh, policy. Uh, according to government code, uh, the agency is required to adopt a written policy specifying the types and occurrences that will qualify um, for a member board member for receiving reimbursement of expenses relating to travel, meals, and lodging, and other um, what's indicated as necessary actual and real expenses that have incurred um, by members of the board. In 2006, the board did adopt uh, resolution number 923 that satisfied this requirement. On an ongoing effort to review our existing financial policies and putting new financial policies in place um, for the management of the agency's finances, uh, this uh, resolution 923 was reviewed and it was identified that there was a need to update the existing um, expenditure reimbursement policy for the board of directors due to number one, the vague na nature of the document, um, which could result in potential inconsistency inconsistencies in its application across all of the board of directors and from year to year as time goes on. Additionally, uh, the resolution, the current resolution included board director remuneration and defined authorized activities. And this is duplicative of ordinance number 62. And so within the attached policy, I've, uh, I've provided some highlights here um, to really call out the major changes. Um, and so remuneration, as mentioned, that was du um, duplicated as uh, according to ordinance number 62 has been removed. And there is reference now made to ordinance 62 and its successor ordinances um, or documents to allow that the authorized activities only be maintained in one resolution and in one listing. So we don't run into potential for um, conflict uh, within two board adopted resolutions or ordinances. The new policy also expressly limits the allowable expenditures to board of directors only, which the previous one was pretty vague on. For lodging expenses, it replaces the IRS reimbursement rates with defined limits when an event or a group uh, or group government rates are not available. Um, that also keeps in mind location. So it's comparing to um, what you can get in that location within a, you know, a reasonable distance uh, for the event that you are attending. For transportation, it defines allowable costs and limits for mode of transportation. Also for meals and incidentals, if we do not ad adopt a, um, a, a limit, uh, which we're proposing $100 for this policy, we must default to the IRS rates, which are much lower. Staff conducted a survey of several special districts in Southern California, and many use the GSA, which is the General Services Administration, to set their allowable limit, which does provide for location, it, consideration for the location of an event um, based off of the city that that event is held in. And we also did some research on those cities that can be seen as quite expensive as to where some of these conferences are held, such as Monterey, Washington, D.C., San Diego, and Las Vegas. And all of those rates, according to all of those um, daily rates, according to GSA, range from $69 in Las Vegas, which was the lowest of those four locations. Um, Monterey and San Diego were 74 per day. 
and Washington DC was $79 per day. Now, based off of experience uh, of board attending um, in, in these locations, it was staff felt and that the those rates were a little bit low um, for, to be practical based off of what's in the location um, where those conferences are held. And so we have increased that to the $100. Also, the policy expressly prohibits the purchase of alcoholic beverages with agency funds, which was another item that the previous policy was quiet on, um, even though that never happened in practice. It just was never defined. Also defines a method of distributing costs in the group meal settings. So such as it when uh, we are attending a conference and there might be staff or and board in attendance or just board in attendance. Um, so that we are not having to get separate checks for every single uh, member that is in attendance, which would be some restaurants may not do it. And it would be administratively difficult uh, to make that happen at the restaurant. And so we felt that providing um, one payment uh, and dividing it up amongst equally all of the participants in that meal and then applying that to the daily rate for ease of administration. The policy also addresses cost incurred for events that are not uh, events not attended by a director uh, that are where um, such as uh, we have purchased a registration or airfare or other um, other expenses associated with an event and a, a director elects not to go and it is not based off of some sort of emergency circumstance, but that is going to be, of course, at the discretion of the executive committee where they can review that. And lastly, it defines the method and timing of the reimbursement of the out-of-pocket expenses to coincide with the monthly um, board of directors payroll. The attached policy has been reviewed by the executive committee and legal counsel whose suggested revisions have been incorporated into the final draft of, uh, of the attached policy. There is no fiscal impact as these are already budgeted expenses um, for the agency. And again, it has on, undergone gone legal review. The recommendation of staff is to for the board of directors to adopt resolution number 1296 updating the agency's meeting expense reimbursement policy for the desert water agency board of directors there's one additional thing i would like to point out prior to taking questions is that in the resolution itself in paragraph two there is a typo of resolution number 926 and it really should say 923 so that will be revised in the final draft i just wanted to point that out and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have in regards to the policy. Thank you, uh, Director Sines. We'll start with you, Director Grasha. Do you have any questions for our finance director? Well, <clears throat> there were several points that uh, this raises and it's, it, 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 it's concerning uh, on, one, on, on at least one where it leaves it to the executive committee who um, I don't know what uh, role the executive committee uh, plays in choosing where each director stays in a hotel, but I recently canceled an, uh, uh, an event because I was going to be uh, placed in a hotel where they place illegal immigrants, while at the same time, other board members would be placed in a much more uh, uh, acceptable uh, environment. So I wondered if, 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 that, if that you wanted to put in... Uh, uh, in writing that policy to allow that kind of activity and the, the disgraceful acts directed toward one director over another select group of directors, if that's now part of this and if, if, if this agency wants to really continue down that path. Is there anything else? No. Okay, thank you. Director Bloomer. I don't have any comments or questions. Thank you. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm I, going to suggest a small change. I, I find the document 
a bit overly prescriptive. I mean, there are only five of us, which is a, a long and detailed policy. But um, I want to address the issue. This may, this may help Director Grasha too. The document requires the agent says the agency will make all hotel accommodations. The agency will make all transportation arrangements. Um, I, I like, like the option to do my own air transportation arrangements because I have benefits with the airlines and um, I wouldn't have to pay baggage fees. I won't have to. I get. I will get trip cancellation coverage. I get global assistance just by using the right credit card. And if the agency makes these reservations, those benefits are are lost. So I would like to suggest in, um, in page three of the document, the agency may make all hotel reservations and the agency may make all transportation reservations. And that way, if Director Grasha has a problem with the uh, hotel that the agency suggests, you could he could pick a different one. And so could I. So that's a, that's a, a change I would like to, uh, to propose. So, oh, sorry. Oh, um, did you have anything else? I was going to no, that, that was it. The background. Okay. Um, so the reason why that was built in was because administratively for the agency, for us to be able to comply with the policy, it helps for us to be able to make those arrangements so that we're doing the research to make sure that we are complying with that policy. Also, um, and I guess I might need to defer to Mike on, on this next comment is that of course, it is not the um, you're not to be incurring any really gain or loss for the trap for um, for the work on behalf of the agency. And so, for us to be able to make those accommodations using agency credit cards and all that, so we're not we are taking on 100% of those costs, and there is no benefit or harm to the board of directors. Um, in in arrangements such as this, and this is our best way to ensure that. Um, yeah, and in response to that, I'm not saying that you know the agency can't do it. I'm just saying that they, you know, between the director and the and the assistant secretary, they could work this out. But the policy, as written, requires the agency to make mm -hmm. these reservations, and I think that's a little bit inflexible. And so, um, Mike, would we be able to allow the board to make the determination whether they wanted to make the revision as to May, and would that cause any problems for us in um, in regards to potential for um, creating benefit or loss towards the the director by using points and using and getting additional benefits? And. Oh, I see. Uh, so the, the question, uh, Esther, is uh, whether a director would gain personal points uh, by setting it up himself. Uh, no, no, that's not it. The, the issue I, is, um, for example, if uh, yeah. if the agency books a, a flight on uh, United, um, but using the agency credit card and they book it basic economy, someone has to pay for baggage if there is some. Somebody has to pay for seat reservations sometimes. Um, but if the director himself has, is in the affinity program, the frequent flyer program of that airline, they would not have to pay those fees if you use the right credit card. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, it's not about the mileage benefits. It's about what do you get for the dollars? Yes, and I guess that, that is my concern. And so that's as, and so I would have to defer to Mike whether that would be allowable because um, if if the board decides that they would like that flexibility and we can build that in, we can add the May, but I just want to make sure that we are not, um, according to our responsibility of the agency, make sure that we aren't providing, creating any issues by allowing that, I guess. I think it's May now. In fact, I, I was offered the ability to make my own reservations in the last go around. And I was just so flabbergasted by the horrible treatment of the staff of this director that I just canceled the trip. And this this now allows for this agency. Director Grasha, Director Grasha, you've already had your opportunity to speak on this matter. Uh, you will not interrupt our <clears throat> counsel as he's trying to answer the question for our secretary treasurer and our finance director. Mr. Rodell, please. Well, well, I, you know, I think that I think the board, if it wants to, uh, would have the flexibility to allow each director to make his or her own uh, arrangements and to simply uh, reimburse. 
I don't I don't see a legal problem there. Uh, it probably is um, a little more cumbersome in terms of of administration, a little more administrative burden. So what that means is the director would then have to submit some sort of uh, reimbursement voucher that would have to be processed. And uh, I suppose, you know, in strict adherence to the policy, uh, the agency would need to make sure that there's no uh, departure from what the policy says about, you know, obtaining the most economical uh, arrangements uh, available, that sort of thing. So it, it, that change, I think, potentially would um, increase administrative burden a little bit, but I, I don't think it would be uh, illegal to do that. Uh, personally, I, I don't see that as a problem. Right. Right. Yes, there is the, the, the concern for the administrative, but there's there's two different sides to the coin, of course. If um, we are having um, reimbursement or the director schedules their travel themselves, yes, it does alleviate on, on the front end the administrative burden, uh, such as Sylvia or, um, or Jamie um, helping to, so what are your preferences and all of that. But if, and so, and even for travel, because when it comes to travel, you know, there's many different times a day. What what works for you? Um, is it selection one, two, three, four of these different timelines is best for your schedule um, to be able to travel to a location? Yes, that is a bit more administrative burden up front. But of course, the flip side is, is that if you are doing it yourself, then we still have to go and do the research to make sure that it is the most, it, it falls within the policy. And then it trickles down to different individuals taking in the reimbursement, creating the forms to be able to get over the payroll, to be able to either a reimburse, to reimburse for those expenses. So, you know, there's administrative uh, efforts on both in, in both options. It's just which one is it going to be? Um, so, and in 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 my view, in of course, in suggesting that the agency take that on, is that that's going to provide us the best capabilities um, to be able to adhere to policy and make sure our processes are streamlined in house. Um, but Devin, with um, Mike's um, opinion that it would not create a legal issue for us, then we can definitely add the May if the board decides that they would like to. Thank you. Well, I have two things to say. Firstly, uh, I think that providing directors some flexibility is appropriate. And if that means inserting and replacing will with may, then uh, that would be something I would support. Understanding, of course, that it shifts some of the burden of the administration uh, back to uh, staff. I also wanna comment on Director Grasha's um, situation that he made reference to, which I understand had to do with a late registration uh, attending a conference and that the only available hotel was, or the one that was suggested was one of the few available for that particular conference. I seriously doubt that staff made a concerted effort to somehow degrade him or make his situation untenable. And whether or not there happened to be undocumented people in that hotel as long as the hotel is a sat is a satisfactory location and not doesn't necessarily have to be a grand establishment, then I really really take issue with this uh, this disrespect that's being shown to staff. So with that, I will entertain a motion. Um, I I like to move an amendment uh, before we vote on the document. Is that the correct procedure? I'm sorry. Okay. Shouldn't we shouldn't we address that as an amendment to the document and then vote on it as a as a as a whole? I think I, your motion can make that amendment. Yeah, I'd like to move to amend the document, attachment A, page three. So the agency may make all hotel reservations. That the agency may make all transportation reservations. Okay, is that your motion? That is the motion. All right. Thank you. So I have a first. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Assistant Secretary Baca, would you please take a roll call vote? Director Grosha? Uh, I want to clarify um, 
Yeah, that we're voting right now. I, um, Please. What, are we, what vote. are we voting on? What are we voting on, Mr. President? Were you not listening to the motion? I heard every word. Okay. And so I don't know if we're voting on the ordinance or if we're yeah. voting on the change. On the change. Both. We're voting on. We're voting on approving it with the change. That's correct. We are voting on an amended ordinance, as described in the motion by Secretary Treasurer McKenna, replacing will with may. No. Thank you, Secretary. Or uh, sorry, Assistant uh, Director Bloomer. Director Bloomer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Secretary, Secretary Treasurer, Treasurer McKenna. McKenna. Yes. Vice President Bonin's absence and President Ortega. Yes. Thank you. We can go to action item 6B, request approval of resolution number 1297 DWA public event compensation policy. Mrs. Metzger. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. Ashley Metzger with Regional Government Services Authority. Um, I had the privilege of working with staff and directors on this resolution um, to enact a public event compensation policy. Many uh, directors from water agencies around California and beyond are compensated when they attend public events as representatives of the agency. The attached resolution includes a policy that outlines board member compensation for a per diem in order to attend an approved event. This uh, policy does align with California Water Code and D DWA Ordinance 62 in that it caps all compensated activities at 10 per diems per month. Um, so for example, if a director attends four meetings um, that are DWA board or committee meetings, they would have six additional opportunities to attend another compensated event, such as a public event on the approved list. These events are not being capped in terms of how many directors may attend any given event. All five directors could attend any of the events on the approved list, and the directors do not have to give notice um, of their intent to attend the event. The only thing they are required to do um, per the resolution you just adopted, um, 1296, and per DWA Ordinance 62, is report out on the activities um, during the next board meeting. So just to give a, a brief summary of the event, uh, and I would like to um, thank the members of the executive committee who spent considerable time, um, you know, really getting this to a good place. I, I think that, um, you know, the policy is, is comprehensive, but, but short and um, clear. And we're certainly, um, you know, eager to get any feedback and recommend that the board of directors adopt resolution 1297, um, setting forth a public event and compensation policy. Thank you. We'll start with Director Grasha. Do you have any questions? for Mrs. Metzger? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, thank you. I have comments though. Would you like to provide them now or would you like to provide them later? I would like to provide them at the end of the, at the conclusion before we vote. Okay. Director Bloomer? I don't have any uh, questions or comments at this time. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Well, I do have a couple. The resolution doesn't refer to the list of events. So how does that operate? The The list of events is... Yes, sir. It's the, a, go on. The resolution refers to the policy, um, and the policy refers to the list of events. And we will soon, after we adopt both resolutions, we will adopt the list of events. The list of events is meant to be a living document so that over time, the board of directors may augment the list, uh, shorten the list, uh, change it in any way that they see fit, and that can be done at any board meeting. Okay, but attachment A is about implementation, but attachment A does not include the list. 
That's correct. Um, we uh, discussed this with legal counsel and he recommended separating the list as a separate item. That way, um, in the event that directors are comfortable with the policy itself, but would like to make changes to the list, it would streamline that process today. All right, because that's exactly the situation I'm in. I'd like to make, I would like to uh, make a change to the list. Yes, sir. How do I do we, that? <laughs> I would recommend that we wait until item 6D. 6D, okay, all right. Other than I have no problem with it otherwise. Thank you. And I have no further uh, questions nor comments. So I will go back to Director Grasha, who apparently has some comments at this point. Well, I asked to uh, add a uh, uh, one group uh, event to our uh, policy. And now I've got three new laws that add a whole new layer of conversation to being able to accomplish that simple task. And it's written in a way that's highly, highly uh, deterious to the relationship of our board and our constituents to pad this uh, uh, list with, all, uh, the, with a list of things like uh, the Jalisco uh, party in Cathedral City is offensive to me and I won't support this. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's actually item 6D, as we already discussed with uh, um, Secretary Treasurer McKenna. So there is an opportunity to address that list once we get to that. So at this point, I suppose we can entertain a resolution for the adoption or consideration of, of the uh, resolution number 1297. I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution number 1298 as presented. I think we're on 1297, are we not? Yes, Mr. President. Yes. Oh, sorry. Would you like to amend your uh, motion? Yes, make a motion to approve resolution number 1297. Thank you. I, I will second that. Thank you. Assistant Secretary Baca, may we have a roll call vote, please? Director Grosha? No. Director Bloomer? Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Yes. Vice President Bowman's absence is noted. And President Ortega? Aye. Thank you. So we'll move to item 6C, which is request adoption of resolution number 1298, DWA external meeting compensation policy. Thank you, Mrs. Metzger. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. This is a very similar um, staff report and um, resolution and policy here, with the exception that this is to cover external meetings. External meetings would be um, assigned to a director, similar to a committee assignment. There would be a, a director who's primarily responsible for attending a series of meetings, and they would have an alternate in the event that they are unavailable. Um, Again, this policy um, calls for a list approved by the Board of Directors, which we will review in item 6D. This policy also covers um, required trainings. Um, for example, sexual harassment prevention training, ethics training, so that the board can receive compensation for those trainings if they are not uh, attended in a conference setting. So if, if you are um, required to get that training done and you need to do it, you know, from your home. Um, those trainings take quite a few hours and, and you would be able to receive compensation for that. These um, compensations, again, are in line with the same per diem amount and with the same per diem cap of 10 per month. So um, in my previous example, I gave four DWA meetings and six public events. If you were to have attended that many meetings, you would not be eligible to get compensated for these external meetings. So there's still the same overall 10 cap. So if you have four DWA meetings and three public events, you could still put in for another three external meetings and you would be compensated um, for your time and also reimbursement for mileage and any expenses associated with attending. Pursuant to the um, policy that was adopted 1296 um, with reimbursement. And uh, legal counsel reviewed the policy and resolution as well on this item. 
And we recommend that the Board of Directors adopt Resolution 1298 to enact this external meetings compensation policy. Thank you. Director Grasha, do you have any questions or comments? Well, I in your description, I uh, raised a question about uh, the total. You said you explain that to again about the total number of meetings. And does this change it from 10 to another number? Because my understanding is law limits it to 10 period. Yes, sir. You are correct. 10 overall, no matter which category they come from. So um, you may attend you know, four from the DWA bucket, three from events, three from uh, meetings, you could do kind of any configuration that gets you to that 10 total. But the the cap at 10 is per the California Water Code and DWA Ordinance 62. But you're correct in your interpretation. So, okay, so we're not adding a, another, we're not slipping another three different meetings because we're calling them something else. Is that right? No, we are just broadening the um, type of events that board members may receive compensation for because attending a city council meeting or a Coachella Valley Water District board meeting, for example, um, you know, those meetings are hours long. And, um, you know, if you're required to report back to the board of directors, you would be taking notes and, you know, um, some of those meetings even go until midnight. <laughs> so we staff felt that it was appropriate to compensate board members for their commitment in attending these events. And we also feel that it will further our relations with these other organizations. Thanks, I agree with that. Um, I would say that, um, you know, I've attended CVWD meetings going back probably 15 years and, and never received compensation for it. Um, I, I, I wonder if, uh, well, the, 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 now the, the, these, these meetings are not uh, uh, going to be available for all directors. These are going to be meetings that are going to be, uh, have appointed by the president of the board. And, um, and, and, and am I understanding that correctly? Yes, sir, you are. So it'll be, um, kind of a favorite pet kind of situation and not based on uh, experience and overall understanding of the system. And, uh, and basically politics will choose who gets these uh, uh, plum assignments that other people do for free and have done for decades. Is there anything else? Seems that there is not. So Director Bloomer, do you have any questions or comments? I don't have any questions or comments, but I'll make a motion to um, no, approve, <laughs> approve the policy as presented. Uh, we could have a second and then we can continue. Uh, hold on a second. Um, not everyone has spoken. We're supposed to have an opportunity. Yes, to speak. I, as I said, we can have we can entertain a second and then we can continue discussion. Ah, OK. Is there a second? Seeing none, we can continue the discussion. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Um, I, I'm definitely in favor of this change of policy. I think it's it's uh, very necessary for us to reach out to city government, other agencies uh, within our territory. You know what they do has a major impact on us, and uh, I think if they see us and they hear us, it's all going to be good. Um, I understand that they're going to make a list of meetings. This is presumably similar to what Mr. Springer does. Uh, someone is assigned to, to follow a, a city council or, or another agency. Um, someone, then there's an alternate presented. I, I presume that's the idea. Yes, Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Um, yeah. Someone would be assigned to the series of meetings. Um, you know, staff saw benefit in the uh, kind of like familiar face recurring over and over again and that person's ability to kind of read the nuances of the board after a continued exposure and then having an alternate of course in the event that a director is busy or sick or otherwise unavailable yeah. um yeah i think it's a great idea but i think we'll just have to rely on the good judgment of the president of the board to uh to assign appropriate people to appropriate uh, uh agencies is there anything else, sir? Not for me. Okay, thank you. 
So I have a few few things to say about this. First of all, I have long been in support of expanding our involvement in the community in not only in terms of public events, but also in terms of our interaction with other like-minded agencies and government bodies. So this, this uh, resolution uh, has my full support. Um, I want to address uh, a comment made by one of our directors who seems to think that somehow the role of president involves politics and playing favorites. My question for staff is that my intention after this, these resolutions, assuming these resolutions are adopted and that the list is adopted as well and or amended, that uh, to how, how can I as president get feedback from the directors about which of these agencies or, or city councils they would be interested in being assigned to without um, getting involved with the Brown Act? How, how does that best work? I will um, defer to legal counsel, but logistically, um, and, and I assume that this would be compliant, would be to receive individual emails um, directed solely to you from, from the directors. So perhaps, um, you know, at the adoption or the approval of the list for item 6C, uh, you could suggest that your compatriots uh, email you their suggestions or their pleasure, and um, you could make your appointments accordingly. But I would love to hear from Mr. Riddell to confirm that that would be compliant with Brenna. Yeah, I, I, I was going to respond the same way. I think uh, in on an individual basis, I think an individual director can communicate his or her preferences to the board president. That would uh, that would not involve communication among three directors. So I think that would be fine. Um, you, what you don't want to do is then talk to other directors about, you know, what they think about that, obviously. Right. Um, but so long as the communication is individually from, from one director without involving a third director, I think that would be uh, a fine, a fine way to do it. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so with that, I'll uh, look for a motion. Director Bloomer, would you like to make a motion? Oh, I already made the motion. So you just need a second. Yeah. Oh, I'm seconded at them. Thank you. All right. Assistant Secretary Baca, could you please take a roll call vote? President Ortega, before I do that, I believe we have a member of the public who wishes to speak. President Nicholas, who has had his hand raised. Uh, yes, but we've been we're not in public comment any longer. Your agenda states that public comment can be mentioned as items are raised uh, for yeah. public hearings. The law allows it. Let him speak, Mr. President. I would encourage you to speak. Yeah. Well, I will defer to Mr. Riddell. Uh, the board, uh, if it decides to allow him to speak, can allow him to speak. Okay. So, so it sounds I'll like you got two, two directors at least that prefer that. So I, I see no harm in it. Uh, the, the the concern would be if it uh, relates to an item that's already been decided, then that could complicate things. But uh, yeah, I think I think you have to, um, you know, um, you, you have to lean in favor of, of allowing full uh, input from the public. So uh, if I were director, I would uh, I would prefer to have him speak. <laughs> Thank you for your counsel. Please go ahead, uh, sir. Nicholas, I, that's all I see is Nicholas. Yes, sir. No, I, I appreciate it. Um, I apologize that I couldn't get on this meeting at the beginning. I was having um, difficulties getting Zoom to, to load or I would have just uh, spoken at the beginning. So my apologies. And I also want to say um, thank you for all of you. You uh, sitting on the board. It's a very thankless job. And I'm sure mostly all you receive is a bunch of um, uh, complaints and People don't usually give good feedback, so I want to thank you all for your time. Um, I did have a comment on an earlier resolution, but it sounds like it'd be better not to address that. So maybe I'll just send a, an email afterwards regarding that. But my main um, item that I just wanted to bring before you guys, uh, maybe for some future consideration or debate amongst yourselves, would be um, if 
if it could potentially be looked at uh, revisiting the policy regarding the $70 fee for uh, turning water service back on after it's been turned off. Um, in general, if somebody isn't paying their water bill, it's usually because they cannot afford their water bill and to tack on a $70 fee, which a lot of times could be higher than the bill of their entire water, um, seems counterintuitive and seems like it really could put people in a in an even harder position to get caught up and, and have their water service turned on. Obviously, in a perfect world, they'd never be behind on their payments, but in a realistic world, uh, sometimes that happens. And so some kind of change to the policy that allows for some grace, even if it was a one-time uh, grace, you know, if you have a habitual offender, it's an entirely different thing, but um, it appears in the current policy, there is no room for leniency. And again, thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. So may we uh, move on to item 6D, request approval of external meetings and public events eligible for compensation. I think we have a I need to take the vote. Oh, no, you're right. Sorry. Sorry. Thank so you. So we have a motion by Director Boomer and a second by yep. Secretary Treasurer McKinney. Yeah. Um, I got ahead of myself. Director Grasha? Um, no, no. Director Boomer? Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Yes. President Boomer's absence is noted and President Ortega. Aye. Thank you. So now we can proceed to action item number 6D, request approval of external meetings and public events eligible for compensation. Thank you, Mrs. Metzger. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so here is the uh, list that folks have been kind of waiting for. We have it broken out into two separate lists, one for the public events and one for the external meetings um, per recommendation of legal counsel. And the events um, cover a, a swath of different categories. Um, you know, we have some events that are civic events, some events that are community events, some business events, and also DWA tours included. And then on the meeting side, we have the series of meetings to cover, uh, you know, neighboring water agencies, the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians uh, Water Authority board meetings. Um, we also have our mandatory trainings listed and then city council meetings and sustainability commission meeting um, for Palm Springs. Those ones are capped, um, you know, presumably because not every city council meeting will have something on the agenda that's of import to Desert Water Agency. Um, so we did uh, include a cap on those at 10 maximum per year. And then for the Sustainability Commission, five maximum per year, we wanted to, um, you know, still have a presence at those meetings, but not necessarily uh, make the assigned um, director feel that they had to attend every single meeting because um, I think the idea was just to be a little bit more familiar. Thank you. And the recommendation is for the board of directors to approve um, two lists um, as outlined, one for meetings and one for external events um, for compensation pursuant to the resolutions um, that were adopted today. Thank you. So, Director Grasha, do you have any questions or comments? You're muted, sir. Hi. Yeah, I did. On the, uh, as I read through these uh, uh, multitude of um, ordinances, um, they seem to all have a, a similar theme, and I wondered if that is included in this or or separate. And that is how uh, dictating how a director would dress and uh, who uh, how how he would address if asked um, uh, to address these boards. If staff would be writing the comments, I couldn't quite figure out where the staff was going with this, and, and it's. Uh, the, you know that language and I don't know if that's part of this or or the other two so maybe you could 
I would be happy to clarify. So these lists um, are aligned with the policies which were previously adopted and um, the mentions of what to wear in terms of wearing a DWA shirt or wearing the DWA name tag with whatever else you happen to be wearing. It's one or the other. Um, we just want you to be identifiable as a representative of Desert Water Agency at public events. The same is not required for these external meetings. Um, you know, typically folks might attend these meetings in a business suit um, and having a name tag on is probably not common practice. So that was not included for the external meetings policy. However, it was included for the public events policy. Yeah, I, interesting. I, I, you know, the first thing I learned when I worked for a congressman as a teenager was that you don't wear name tags. You never wear a name tag. Uh, and, and then when I saw it in here, I thought it demeans the position that you hold literally. And when I saw it in here, I, 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 I was like, why? Why are they? Why are they doing this? So um, I'm glad you uh, shared uh, your thoughts. And uh, I, um, I have a problem being told how to dress. I mean, we have one uh, director who stood buck naked in a church and uh, declared victory. Sir, 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 this is completely in that you inappropriate. Have... Completely inappropriate. But it's completely. Uh, it is completely appropriate. inappropriate. It has nothing to do with the business of the agency. It has nothing to do with the business of this agency, and I will not let you continue to say this. But it's you're telling it's not you're relevant. Telling it's it is written, not relevant, it, sir. It's written in the ordinance how a person. You don't, you don't know. You do not need to bring up the It allows the board to determine natural. whether or not a person is out of order in the way he dresses. You so are, it you is do not relevant need to bring up the personal life of another director. As it relates to the business of this agency, we're in Bizarro Land. It's like we're on an acid trip oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Happy, dro happy dropping. Director Bloomer, do you have any questions or comments? I do not have any questions or comments at this time. Thank you. Secretary Treasurer McKenna, do you have any questions or comments? Secretary Treasurer McKenna. I'm sorry, I accidentally went full screen. I couldn't find the unmute button. No problem. Um, yeah, I, so the, the two separate lists, the, the second one is by assignment only, but the first list, you could just go. Um, is that the idea? Yes, sir. And you may, you may ask for um, agency assistance, for example, procuring tickets. Uh, okay. as many of the civic and business events are ticketed. Um, but yes, you any director um, can attend and they just would enter it in their Paycom time card and um, report out at the following meeting and it would be compensable. It would be helpful if directors let staff know in advance just so that we could ensure the um, most positive outcome. For example, we may suggest you stop by a certain booth at an event or, you know, um, network with a certain group of people we know will be there, but certainly not required to. Um, good. Uh, on the first list then, I see in business, you have a Desert Valley business, uh, who, DBBA is a developer organization, BIA is a construction organization. Now these are part of our constituency, but there seems to be a duplication here. And I think an overemphasis on what, what are really uh, lobbying groups I'm not comfortable that both these names are on the list, but perhaps you can explain uh, why they are. And, and also, I have a suggestion to add one if, if we take one of these off. Certainly, yeah, DVBA and BIA have a little bit of an overlap, so I understand your concern there. Um, but certain uh, members of the groups are more active, and, and we've enjoyed positive relationships with both. And we have had to communicate with both groups whenever we are going through um, changes to our rates uh, and fees for developers. So maintaining a good line of communication with both organizations is helpful. But that said, we could certainly substitute one of these out at the board's pleasure. All right. Uh, then, well, I'm, I'm going to suggest we take the BIA off the list because that's an organization that exists to oppose regulation. That's in their stated purpose. But we are an organization that makes regulation. So I think I think it's I feel it's inappropriate to you know to be hobnobbing with these people at, at our ratepayers' expense. You go by all means, but I don't think we should pay you for it. 
And I'd like to add, I think the Chamber of Commerce, the Chilla Valley Chamber of Commerce, in my experience as, you know, as an individual businessman, Chambers of Commerce were very influential and very helpful. And I think perhaps we should show up there instead. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Mrs. Mr. Mark. President, may I ask for a clarification? Sure, of course. Sure. So we have the Greater Coachella Valley Chamber of Commerce, and then there is also the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Greater Coachella Valley Chamber of Commerce covers Desert Hot Springs, um, but it does not cover Palm Springs. So um, just wanted to point that out and ask for clarification as to whether you would like both organizations or simply one on the list. Well, I didn't know that, and that, that's a wrinkle. Um, I think since the agency's boundaries cover both cities, we need to cover both eight, both uh, chambers of commerce then. Okay, thank you. Um, one more point of clarification, if I will. Yes. Um, so is this any event hosted by the Chamber of Commerce? For example, any ribbon cutting for any business within either of the cities, or is it um, to be kind of drilled down a little bit to perhaps, um, you know, maybe an annual function or, you know, I just want to understand what you have in mind. Um, yes, that's another wrinkle. Um, no, I don't, I don't think you want to be at every ribbon cutting. I mean, if it's major, major, you know, like the new arena or something, perhaps. Um, I don't know if you can address it in this document at all, but uh, I think common sense would have to prevail. Maybe we should put chambers of commerce on the, uh, the approved list rather than this walk-in list. Would that be a, would that be an idea that might work? Yes, I think what we could do is um, assign directors to the chambers and put a cap similar to what we did with the sustainability commission. So we could say five max five per year or max ten per year, whichever um, is most comfortable for the directors. Yeah, I think I think that would be a good idea, or perhaps maybe. We should be moving the BIA and the DVBA onto that uh, uh, by assignment only list. I I just want to mention that I think the BIA events are important. It's important for us to be there to convey why we set our policies in certain ways, and if they have any questions, we're there to address those. I know they're you know they're lobbying on behalf of developers, but. Um, it's important that they understand how we set our rates, how it's done, so they can go back and tell our developers this is this is fair and um, so on and so forth. I'd like to add something, please. I think if you over time you'll find that literally that the BIA is your better friend than the other group and in fact uh, well, uh, so I'd say we leave them both on and, and and as far as the Chamber of Commerce events I think it should be open to all events my experience is that it's these lighter uh, area more airy events that you actually are able to accomplish the things that you, you might wish to accomplish you're able to kind of converse with people and pick them out of a crowd and put, put your finger in their face or even perhaps flip them off at times. Um, so I would suggest that uh, when, if you put a chip, like the, for instance, the Chamber of Commerce, that it's open to all events and you leave it to the director. And if the director gets out of hand, the board can call them in just like you do me at every meeting and just about every uh, item that be discussed. Well, I certainly hope that uh, uh, it's not a practice of directors on this board to flip people off at events. I do it uh, all the time. It's how I got more votes than anyone ever elected in my district. Well, that's that's uh, that's an interesting uh, approach to to life in general. I, I know. Yeah. Uh, but when you when you have when you sir, have the water districts, sir, 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 I'm talking. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, uh, what what Mrs. Metzger do you think we should? Uh, how should we approach these lists at this point? What is your recommendation? I would recommend that um, we actually take them separately. Um, and approve one list at a time um, by motion that clarifies any changes to what is written and before the board. Thank you. Exactly. And I would recommend starting with um, the external meetings list. Okay. So then, then 
what you're what you're recommending is that there be a motion that amends the list, if at all, and then we can take a vote on that amendment. Is that correct? Yes, the vote would be on the amend approving the amended list. Okay, thank you. So I'll look for a motion to uh, starting with this external meetings list uh, to either accept as it is presented or proposed propose amendments. Uh, could you? Uh, so that uh, we're vote, we would be voting without amendments on the list you have. I, it sounded like there were amendments. That no, that's, that's not what I said. What I said I asked for a motion that either accepts the list as proposed right. in front of us or with amendments. So the cha the chamber of commerce functions are not part of the motion. Uh, did no. you did you, you want to add that? You can make a somebody can make a motion that amends the current list that we're looking at. I'm waiting for that motion. Okay. Sir, would you like a crack at that? Well, I, I, I'd i like uh, Director McKenna to add what he wanted, because I, I, I think I he wanted to add those to public events. Yes. I, was just, I was just about to do that, but I was waiting for my turn. Sir, sir, uh, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, would you like to make a motion at this time for our external meetings list? I would. I'd like to move an amendment to the external meetings list to add the uh, both Chambers of Commerce, the Palm Springs and the Coachella Valley Chambers of Commerce to the assignment only list. Okay. So I have a I have a, a motion uh, from Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Do I have a second? Uh, a second. Thank um, you. Mr. President, is that a motion to approve the list as amended? No, yes. there was a motion to amend the list. I okay. actually prefer to vote amendments personally. Um, before we beat up the list, I don't. I don't know that we really need to. There's... do that. <laughs> yeah. we can. We can. You. Your motion is to amend the list and it is. It is solely to amend the list, not to accept the amended list. That is correct. Okay. Do I? And then we have a second from Director Grasha. Uh, yes. Okay. And 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 Council Riddell, what was your? I'm sorry, you, I think you got interrupted. No, no, that was it. I uh, so once this list has been amended, I guess there would be a motion to adopt it as amended, a separate okay. motion. I, I believe that's what's in play at the moment. Yes. Okay. Mr. President, can I make a or ask a question? Sure. Um, so if we're going to add those two chambers, uh, what would the board like to see? All events available or? another maximum well i'll go back to the original motion maker um the, the clarification if, if you need a clarification is that the, the i would be comfortable with a max 10 maximum per year per chamber just to make sure it doesn't get out of hand okay so you've amended your motion to put a cap of 10 per year yes okay and a second uh, i'm sorry director grasha do you accept that uh, amendment to his motion? Well, I do, but and then I would like to have a clarification on the um, on the what, sir? Well, I'm trying to think as if it's even on here. That uh, maybe we passed that one already. Um, that was for another. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I accept that as it is. As it okay. Is. So we have a, a motion from Secretary Treasurer McKenna, a second from Director Grasha. May we have a roll call vote at this time, Assistant Secretary Baca. Director Grasha? Yes. Director Bloomer? Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Yes. President Bowman's absence is noted and President Ortega. Aye. Two passes. So are we now looking for an amendment to ex accept that list or a, a motion to accept that list or are we moving on to the public events list? Well, we need a motion to accept the list. I'll make a motion to accept the list as a second. Okay, thank you. I have a first from Director Bloomer. I have a second from Secretary Treasurer McKenna. May we have a roll call vote, please? 
to accept the amended list. For Russia? Yes. Director Bloomer? Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKinnon? Yes. Vice President Bowman's absence is noted and President Ortega? Aye. Thank you. So now we may move to the public events list. I'll be looking for a motion to accept as presented or amendments to this list, a motion to amend this list. Oh boy. I have, um, for clarification on item three business is uh, DVA, this is where I was trying to narrow, narrow it down on the last item, DVBA public officials luncheons. The DVBA is what the group that I wanted originally added, <laughs> and we ended up with all of this. Um, now, now you're narrowing it to one lunch a year. Uh, I don't think so. Well, they only have one public official, and let uh, they have those every month, and but they they don't call it. They they have an event that they call the public officials lunch, and then they have a public officials lunch meeting every month, but it's not called that. So I, I, it, I, it, you know, I attended them throughout uh, when I, my term at the other board and they actually have an event that they, so. Well, perhaps Mrs. Metzger can provide some clarification. Well, that's kind of what I'm asking, but I'm well, just, really just ask it. Mrs. Metzger, could, would you mind clarifying what appears to be some confusion or distinction about what 3A actually means? Yes, 3A, um, from my knowledge and um, past experience, they do um, tend to hold on a more regular basis, generally uh, roughly monthly. But with COVID, it's been um, a little bit shaky in terms of them doing it every single month. And do they refer to them as lunches on those somewhat monthly events? Um, I believe they call them luncheons um, to be technical. However, we could just change it to meetings um, to simplify and make sure that it's as inclusive as possible. Mm -hmm. And we could even put monthly meetings if we wanted to be even more specific. Director Grasho, what would be your pleasure? I would like it to say all events of all of those groups, uh, I, I trust me, you're not going to get an abuse on these. It, you, there's no way to abuse it. For one thing, they only have one event a month, and most of them are not something I don't think anybody would really, some some of them, I think they've got one. Uh, anyway, so open, uh, if you could, are you ready for a motion? I would entertain that, certainly. Yeah, let me try to... Let me try to word it. I uh, make, uh, uh, make a motion to approve uh, with the uh, change that it would be for all events for all uh, listed uh, groups. And uh, I'm sure the president will keep a, a stiff eye on uh, abuse. And that way uh, I don't have to hear from the uh, assistant secretary that a certain event is not, is not approved or authorized. Do I have a second? All second. Okay. So I have a first from Director Grasha, a second from Director Bloomer, uh, Assistant Secretary Baca. May we have a roll call vote, please? Director Grasha? Yes. Director. Yes. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Yes. President Bowman's absence is noted and President Ortega. Aye. Thank you. Now we can move to item seven, which is a discussion item. Discussion item A, 2022 capital improvement projects presentation from our uh, assistant general manager, uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. So the capital improvement projects uh, presentation, we do this uh, every year at the beginning of each year. And uh, what we like to do is just uh, go over some highlights of the previous year. 
So for 2022, uh, we'll start off with our pipeline projects. So uh, 2022 is actually a, a very slow year for us in regards to installing pipelines. Uh, there was only one pipeline that was installed, a very small piece of pipe on a, a Mesquite Road. Uh, the reason why this was uh, had to be constructed was a developer, uh, as you can see from the photo, there's a development called, uh, at one point it was called the Cameron Project. I think it still might be that, but they may have changed it. But they were required to do some street improvements in the uh, Mesquite and Random Road intersection there. They had to put some concrete uh, within that uh, intersection and they had to put some traffic calming curbs. And our pipe in that area was uh, very old, uh, started to leak. And so uh, our crews went in uh, for emergency pipeline installation under our con contingency pipeline uh, mains. Uh, and we installed about 265 feet of 12 inch pipe. And that work was done for about $134,000. Now, as far as um, the, the current design process for our, our pipelines, we are currently, we're doing five designs right now. We have Ave Avenida Caballeros, which is a 30 inch pipeline. We expect that contract to go out any week now. We are also, during 2022, uh, we worked on our 2021-2022 pipeline replacement project that has a budget of $5.7 million. Uh, that's about 12,000 lineal feet of pipe. And currently that is in the uh, review stage of the drawings. So uh, our anticipation is to have that out sometime within the next couple of months. There's also the Vista Chino pipeline project, which we are having designed by Krieger and Stewart. That has a budget of just over $4 million. And that will replace our 20 inch pipeline within uh, Vista Chino. There's a stretch there. I don't remember the exact uh, streets. Um, it's a challenging job. We have to deal with Caltrans at that point. Uh, in the city of Palm Springs, Caltrans manages that stretch of Vista Chino. And then there's two other uh, pipeline designs that we're working on right now. We're just in the design phase of, of those. Uh, they're re also replacement pipeline jobs. And we don't have uh, budgets yet for those uh, particular projects, but we should uh, anticipate the doing that in our next coming year uh, budget. All right, so our next uh, item is power. So in 2022, back in August, we installed this uh, 31 kW uh, generator. It's an emergency generator for our Cathedral Canyon lift station. And the Cathedral Canyon lift station is located right next to our well 19 which has some, had some vacant land. And this will allow us to uh, provide backup power to our lift station uh, when power goes out. Uh, what we had to do in the past is we had a portable generator. So if our alarms went off, whether there was a power alarm or uh, maybe a high level alarm uh, due to power outage, we had to come into the office, our op center, we had to hook up a portable generator. We had to haul it out to the site, uh, hook it up. And, and then we had to have an individual um, man the, the generator during that power outage. This new generator will have an automatic switch if power goes out at our lift station. Uh, this will switch over to our, the generator. It's extremely important that we have power there. There's a wet well there that uh, collects uh, sewage from the local area. And to prevent any type of overflow, uh, that's why it's uh, crucial that we have this lift station. 
And the next job, facility control improvements. So we, uh, at our reclamation plant, we had to replace the PLC due to old age. And uh, this is the, the brains of how the plant operates. Uh, there's a couple photos here. Uh, the photo on the right shows all the wiring and so forth of the components of the PLC. And the photo on the left shows uh, the new cabinet tree. Now the old equipment, uh, uh, those cabinet doors had all the knobs and lights and to, to control all the equipment at the rec plant. Whereas now with this PLC, with the, we put new doors on in the cabinet tree and it's just controlled uh, by that one component there. And that was performed back in February, 2022. The next project was at our Whitewater Hydro plant. We also did some PLC uh, work. Uh, we modernized the uh, equipment. The photo on the right shows uh, the existing equipment. Uh, you see it's very old, it was built in, in the mid 80s. Uh, we then went in and we modernized some of the controls uh, which allow that hydro plant to be started. Uh, uh, we do not have to be on site to start the equipment now. Uh, before if the plant went offline, let's say due to maybe a power a flicker, we had to drive out to the site and we had to sync the, the start of it by hand. Whereas now with the new PLC, that can all be done manually, uh, or I'm sorry, it could be done at our office here and uh, saves us a lot of time having to drive out to the site. That work was done back in February. And the next project was our, our Well 22 Motor Control Center. Uh, just uh, this was one of our older wells uh, and the equipment uh, due, due to age needed to be replaced. So uh, we do this periodically depending on age of our wells. We had a um, consultant or a contractor assist us with the installation solcers uh, out of Colton, helped our crews uh, put the equipment in. Uh, the next item was uh, at our Snow Creek hydro plant. <clears throat> there was some roof damage. So we, we repaired the roof, but we also, what we did is we added uh, some uh, AC equipment to our control room. Uh, previously, what it had was just some vents, which allowed air to flow into the, into the room to cool the equipment. But as you know, it's very windy out there. It got it would get very dusty and we have to do an annual inspection. And one of the re uh, recommended items was to actually put in an, a cooling unit and close off the vents to the room, which is what we did here. As you see on the right-hand side, you can see that split case uh, AC unit, which is uh, next to the control panels there. And we did some flow meter work at our Snow Creek intake. There's a 24 inch meter that uh, the old meter started to fail. So we came in and uh, we put this uh, mag meter in. We bring that signal into our op center through SCADA. Uh, it's extremely important for us to monitor how much water we're pulling from the, the intakes. And that work was done back in March of 2022. At well 17, we uh, installed an 8 inch mag meter at this well site what we found was that the uh, existing meter was starting to show some inaccurate reads uh, so due to age and we put in a mag meter here which again we can bring that into through 
into uh, our operations room here and through SCADA. And that work was done back in September. We also did a lot of work for field services. We are installing the uh, an ERT. Those are devices that go in at all of our meters. We have about 3,700 left to install. And with, uh, I, we got a grant to purchase some of these, uh, these ERTs. And uh, the last phases here, phase 1.4 and 1.5 will, once we complete these installations, all of our meters will have the ERT devices which allows our uh, field services to read the meters through their vehicles as they drive by the roads. And this is an ongoing project. We hope to have all of the ERTs uh, installed here uh, by June of this year. And facilities. This was a, a project that we, uh, the community out at our Well 25 location, uh, they asked if we can do some landscaping to try to uh, hide the fence and the bob wire that uh, is located at this site. And what we decided to do is plant some pyrocantha to create a nice barrier. It still allows us to have the security that we need at the site. Uh, We've have we have that at uh, some other sites. It's worked very well, and uh, again, this was in response to uh, some community uh, homeowners in that area uh, looking to see if we can somehow uh, beautify the the site. And that uh, work was just recently completed. And with that, uh, that concludes the presentation. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Director Grasha, do you have any questions for Mr. Johnson? Uh, just uh, on the uh, pyracantha, did, have you gotten feedback from the neighborhood on that yet? Um, I know they spoke at a couple of board meetings and had some concerns. I just wondered if how that went or is going. I, I believe a, a gentleman did reach out, uh, said that uh, he saw that we installed the pyrocanthi. He had some concerns about an area in the front. Uh, we had to keep it blank because we have a rolling gate. And so what we decided to do was, uh, and we also had a backflow device. And what we did is we ended up moving the backflow device so that we can get a, a couple more pyrocantha in that area. And we're looking to to improve the 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 gate so that it's a um, it opens and it 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 looks similar to a gate that a house has across the street. So it's a little more modern looking, and we think that it would look nice. Uh, to try to match that. We're, we're getting quotes to, to get that done. And, but other than that, I have, I have not heard from anyone else uh, regarding the work. Well, I, out of curiosity, went by and looked at it several months ago. And, uh, and uh, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't find it too terribly offensive. And I, I wondered what his expectations were. So that was kind of what uh, and I'm still wondering you know I, I'm looking at the photographs and you know I don't want to sound like I'm giving approval to it but uh, uh, but it seemed adequate and appropriate for the use and and I, I as a, if I were a homeowner there I would not be offended by what's going on there so just a thought on that and um I you know some um with the upgrades that you're making on some of these uh, projects in terms of going to the PLC control systems, um, are you able to comment on uh, how these things are, are integrating with our staff and the level of expertise that our staff has to be able to operate? If, you know, if, if things, if it went, when these things started becoming popular, my business, I, you know, I had to 
go to school, if you will, first time I've ever had to, you know, hire people because of a specialty, uh, a new and a, a, a new technology. And uh, it's, it's literally why I ended up retiring and selling the company. It was just too complicated. Uh, people would learn how to operate the systems, design the systems, and then they would immediately be hired into other uh, uh, companies because it, it's so complicated and so complex that a lot of people, um, well, that's my experience. And I wondered uh, how much of that are we contracting out and uh, to, you know, the design, of course, and all the equipment uh, is being done outside. And, um, I, you know, are we being, are, 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 I was being held hostage. I wonder if the agency is going to be held hostage by uh, consultants and engineering firms now to, just to get our, keep our pumps running. I wonder if you could share some thoughts on that. Sure. Uh, yeah, PLCs are not new to us. We, we've had PLCs. Uh, actually, the, this is the second PLC installation at the at the rec plant. We do have a, a consulting firm that does assist us with the programming of the PLCs. Uh, our staff, they do take classes uh, on uh, PLCs. Uh, we do extensive training. Uh, it's it's not something that they're not that they are familiar with with that. Uh, with uh, how the PLCs operate. Uh, they, they do understand how to do some programming. If it's very complex programming, we will reach out to our, our consultant who can assist us with that. Uh, but I, I understand, uh, as you said, it, it, has, it's, it, it is a complicated uh, device. Uh, that's why we do have all of the training for our staff to, so that they are up to date with how a PLCOC works and so forth. Okay, no, well, thank you. I, I, uh, I'm, not, I'm leery, but I'm supportive, of course. I'm glad that you guys are incorporating them. I just hope that you can keep a level of expertise in-house to be able to attack problems when they come up and not be uh, held hostage by consulting firms that uh, leak passwords and things of that nature to, uh, uh, I guess, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Director Bloomer, do you have any questions or comments? I do not have any questions or comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Secretary Treasurer McKenna, I'm sure you have some questions and comments. Yeah, you, you know I do because I'm such a techie, geeky guy. <laughs> um, my question goes to the ERPs, the encoder receiver transmitters that you're attaching to the meters. What, what was the thinking behind doing that rather than going to smart meters? And secondly, are they battery powered and do you have problems with the batteries? As we have a really sad history of that up here in Desert Hot Springs. Sure. Uh, so the Ertz, uh, we have Badger meters. Uh, at one point, I wasn't involved with uh, the selection of, of the devices that we went with, but I and Mark, maybe you might have a little more insight into to that, but it's my understanding that uh, the ERTs, which are through ITRON, they work with Badger meters. Uh, and because we had so many Badger meters uh, in the system, we wanted to uh, uh, an ERT that would work with the meters. Therefore, we wouldn't, would not have to uh, replace all the meters in, in a sense, these installing the ERTs, they become a smart meter uh, in the sense that we'll be able to, our next phase of the work is to put a, what we call a fixed network where we'll have uh, the meters uh, talk to uh, devices, radios, which will bring those signals in without having to drive uh, down the street. They are battery operated. Uh, I think uh, some of the older models had some battery issues, but they have resolved that issue. Um, I don't know, Mark, if there's anything maybe that I missed or. Uh, I think that's what you said was right. Um, we haven't had any problems with the batteries. Uh, they're guaranteed or warranted uh, for 20 years. Um, we've had good luck with uh, ITRON 
DWA has used ITRON from day one. So that's our relationship with ITRON and Badger Meter as well. We've been with Badger for a long, long time. We've gone through a few iterations of different ERTs. Uh, some have been bad. Early on, when the technology was being rolled out, there were problems. And we learned from those, those problems. And we were uh, very careful about getting, you know, involved in this program without other, you know, agencies weighing in. We, we surveyed a lot of other agencies that were using the same equipment. And if they had problems, we didn't go there. So uh, we're having pretty good success. Uh, and we're almost completed. And it's going to be uh, really, I think, exciting to be able to uh, read all the meters at one time and read anybody's meter at any time. And I think that the communication between the agency and the customer is going to be uh, you know, improved uh, immensely. So. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Well, on that point, uh, when when you have, if you get to the point where you mesh all these together and you can see them individually, will you be making it available to the, the customer? You know, the usage of data, I, I find very useful to be able to, you know, see what the meter tells, tells me, uh, you know, day by day. Um, I Absolutely. Um, I think that during the last drought, when we asked everybody to take measures at home to save water, I think it would be really beneficial for them to be able to look and see how they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they make a change, how much of an impact does it make? Those kind of things are, are critical when you're asking for people to do things, change their habits and water use uh, practices. And so when would it be possible for the you know, the customers to be able to see their usage of data in real time. Yeah, we got um, as, as Steve said, when the fixed network is in place, and I think that's within the next couple of years, uh, okay. we'll have that in place. As soon as that's in place, ITRON already has a, a program that they uh, sell with the fixed network, which has an interface for customers and also has uh, quite a bit in it for us to do analysis to cool. see what's going on with water use. Okay. Good. Anything else, sir? No. Okay, thank you. And I have no additional questions or comments. Thank you um, both uh, uh, Mr. Krause and Mr. Johnson for this uh, report. And we can move on to the general manager, manager's report, which I believe is item eight. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. The first item is uh, DWR rewards Coachella Valley agencies 6.3 million under the Urban Community Drought Relief Program. Uh, the California Department of Water Resources awarded nine drought resilient projects across the state uh, using 46 million in funding. DWR awarded the Coachella Valley projects approximately 6.3 million, which is 14% of that 46 million. In the table, you can see that uh, DWA is receiving regional grass replacement funding of approximately $1.6 million and also a regional intertie project at 581,250. Uh, the regional intertie project is, uh, and we have a connection to the Coachella Valley Water District uh, down on Date Palm and where Highway 111 uh, intersect, but we wanted to have another intertie uh, further uh, north. So this, was, this is money that will be going towards that. And in the case of an emergency, uh, we can uh, provide water to Coachella Valley Water District or vice versa. They can provide it to us uh, quite a bit more flexibility. And there are a couple other agencies that are also intertying to Coachella Valley Water District. I believe it's uh, Indio Water Authority and Bermuda Dunes as well. Uh, Desert Water Agency is the lead project sponsor on the regional intertie project. And Woodard and Kern will be uh, the project a supervisor on the uh, rest of the grant project. Uh, DWR, uh, the Coachella Valley agencies will begin contracting with DWR and ultimately submit requests for reimbursement. I'd also like to uh, make a, a verbal update on the city funding of our regional grass, or not regional grass, but our DWA grass replacement program. On February 9th, the City of Palm Springs staff approved 300,000 in additional funding to match DWA's grass removal program on residential projects. And the city has contributed $550,000 this year to the program. 
These projects are eligible, eligible for $6 uh, per square foot for the first 1,666 square feet. And then DWA funds the remainder of the square footage at $3 per square foot. The city council approved this month, excuse me, the funds that the city council approved this month all went to our project wait list. Some of the wait list will not be funded and will be given the option to move forward at $3 per square foot with funding from Desert Water Agency. Uh, city staff is also planning a budget light item for the upcoming fiscal year, which is uh, good news. Uh, next item, please. Uh, state Water Contractor Science Program. The state water contractors uh, announced that they uh, were going out for a request for proposals seeking an investment of $3 million in high quality science projects that will advance understanding of complex systems in San Francisco Bay and Sacramento San Joaquin Delta and upper watersheds. I just wanted the board to know that we, uh, Desert Water Agency's fiscal contribution to this effort is approximately $75,000, which is taken out of our annual dues paid to the uh, State Water Contractor Association. Uh, human resources meetings and activities, uh, quite a few PACOM implementation meetings and uh, PACOM final overview meeting. Uh, there was a UCR Women in Leadership Program Advisory Committee meeting. We uh, staff also had an opportunity to meet with uh, Lincoln representatives on site. We con uh, conducted interviews for an accounting position replacement. Uh, we had a, web a webinar on benefit communications and a webinar on next level hiring in 2023, the intelligent interview. We're also, uh, DWA's offices were closed on Monday, February 20th in observance of President's Day. And the system leak report, I have to say, I think this is an all-time low, only 12 leaks over two weeks. So that's really great news. I don't know why that is, but I'll take the win. Uh, it, the only two uh, pipelines that leaked on the list, uh, Andreas Road and Luella Road are in our replacement pipeline. Uh, projects for 2021 and 2022. And uh, my meetings list, uh, we had a couple of meetings to go over draft legislation and regulatory policy, policy platform. I had a couple uh, mediation meetings on our tribal water rights lawsuit, uh, meetings to discuss the virtual hybrid meetings. Uh, CV, I did a CV uh, water accounts presentation, attended a sites budget and finance committee, also uh, uh, DWA's conservation and public affairs committee meeting. We had a meeting with uh, Aqua's executive director, uh, Dave Egerton, uh, several uh, DCP and state water contractor monthly meetings. Uh, that, that was last week that I attended our executive committee meeting. A uh, SFCWA board meeting, which is uh, state federal contractors water authority. So another sort of a state water contractor uh, board meeting that and uh, sites reservoir committee authority joint meeting. And to, later on today, a desert Coachella uh, metropolitan coordination meeting. And with that, that concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Krause. Director Grasha. Do you have any questions or comments for our general manager? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Director Bloomer. I have one question on the um, city funding for the uh, turf buyback. Um, they approved it only for residential, the extra, not, does that include HOAs? I'm assuming it doesn't include commercial. Well, the uh, memorandum that Ashley gave me says, residential projects. So if she wants to uh, give a, a finer detail on that, I'd be happy to hear it. Thank you, um, General Manager Krauss and Director Bloomer for your question. The city interprets residential products to, projects to be inclusive of HOAs, apartment complexes, and single family homes. Okay, perfect. I've been getting lots of emails from constituents <laughs> regarding this information. Thank you. Thank you. 
Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Yeah, I'm interested in the regional intertie uh, project. Is there anywhere, um, do we publicize the details of that on the website? Can I just look at it? But I'm, I'm, the question really, I, I, there's no intertie at the moment between Mission Springs and uh, Desert Water Agency. Is there any plan to have one? Uh, our systems are pretty far apart. Uh, mm -hmm. It would take a substantial amount of piping. And I believe uh, the closest we get to Mission Springs is our pipeline that goes up Indian Avenue and it goes to the um, the train station. Very mm -hmm. small. So, I mean, there would be a little bit of water that would be available, but not not much because that's really the far end of the system. Yeah, There's only a small pipe that goes to that facility. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. And I have no additional questions or comments. Um, it looks like Mr. Nicholas has his hand up again, um, or I'm not sure if that's left over from before. I think it's just one really quick question. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. My question just was pertaining to do you, the board, prefer that these comments all be in the beginning? I was just looking for some clarification. It was, it's very hard to understand you. It's very muffled. Uh, is it better now? Not particularly. I can understand. I'm going to speak. I will do my best to speak up. My apologies. So That's really, much better. Thank fun. you. Thank oh, you, Dr. Okay. Glasha. I don't need your support there. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. Again, just my question is regarding in your in your minute, I'm just looking for some clarification. Is it your preference that we, the public, speak at the beginning of the meeting, or can you speak after something has been presented? Uh, well, we're not really supposed to address things that are, on, are not on the agenda, but if, uh, if our general counsel will let me, I can answer that. Uh, yes, I think that would be fine. I, I think the question has to do with how the agenda is organized. I, That's I great. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, we, we make opportunities for public comment at the beginning of our meetings for items that are not on our agenda, as well as items that are on our agenda. Uh, we take each of those separately. If there's an item that's not on our agenda, but is within the purview of this water agency, uh, and the member of the public has a comment to make, uh, you, you are allowed to do so. We ask you to keep that under three minutes, but we are not allowed to address that item because it's not on our agenda. If it's <coughs> on the other hand, it is on our agenda. Uh, we also ask that you keep your comments to three minutes, uh, but we do have the opportunity to, to discuss it as board because it is already on our agenda. And there, ain't, there are also certain items that will appear on our agenda from time to time that are referred to on the agenda as public hearings. And that's also an opportunity for the public to participate and ask questions or make comments. Is that okay? Uh, but, yes, it does. And I apologize for interrupting the meeting. I just wanted to get that clarified for future reference. So thank you no for problem. your time. No, appreciate it. And I appreciate your involvement. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh, thank you so much. All right. So we can move to item number nine which is director's comments and requests. And we'll start with Director Grasha. Uh, I don't have any comments or requests. Thank you. Director Bloomer. I also do not have any comments or requests. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Um, well, two topics. Uh, one is the, you know, the conservation measures, the grass, the turf removal, the toilets. Um, I'm, I'm very keen to keep these cranked up to the highest possible level. And I know we still don't have a program for replacement of residential toilets. I think I really like the staff to look at that. Um, and I noticed, I saw, I saw you on television, actually. And, and uh, then I read in the Desert Sun about how Coachella Valley Water District is experiencing, you know, has a, has a, a tiered price and people pay attention when they're wasting water and then it suddenly gets quite expensive. I know my Edison bill, if you if you go above four four times the average, I think it's it's punitive. I wonder if we should look at having some fairly punitive level of pricing 
for people that just egregiously waste water. So let's get, we should definitely look at that. Then the second topic is, I'm watching with considerable alarm that full train derailment situation in Ohio, on the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. Uh, these tanker cars roll through our area too. They roll right across the top of our aquifer. They roll right alongside the replenishment facility at Whitewater. We have no idea what's in them. So I would encourage the staff to take a look at what's going on in Ohio and have some sort of contingency plan or at least think about what we would do if we had a train derailment like that in our backyard. I think that's an important issue we should we should keep an eye on. And that's it for me. Thank you. And I have a couple of comments. I'll start with the one that's uh, right in front of us, which is I, time and time again, am amazed about the level of attack and disrespect that happens on these meetings, in these meetings. There is no reason for us to discuss the personal life of a board member or a staff member that has nothing to do with the Desert Water Agency. And I will not tolerate it. And that, if that means that I have to remind us at every beginning of every meeting, then that's what it's going to be. And if that means that I have to interrupt and end the conversation, that's what it means. I hope that I'm clear. Secondly, I believe that the four directors that are on this call today, on this meeting today, are registered for the upcoming Urban Water Institute Conference that begins tomorrow afternoon at the Palm Springs Hilton. I look forward to seeing all of you at that meeting tomorrow afternoon, on Thursday, and on Friday morning. And with that, I will adjourn this open session meeting and we will go into closed session. I have, my clock says 9.47. So at 10 o'clock, we will open the meeting and close.